Jesus was a rock star. If you are consistent in seeking God, everything else just kind of happens, right? If you, are, if you are passionately seeking God, everything else will take care of itself. <laughs> it's so simple, but it's so, it's so hard. It's so hard because the enemy, if he wanted to hurt you, and he does, if he hates you, and he does, all, he actually doesn't have to make you fall to some big sin. He does, all he has to do is get you to ignore God. Because everything that is going to be good for your life, everything that's going to give you purpose in your life, everything that's going to give you energy and passion to get out of bed in the morning, all of that is found in Jesus. And all Satan has to do is get you on TikTok instead of reading your Bible long enough that you don't see God and you don't spend time with him. And then another one day goes by, another day goes by, another day goes by. And so we want to declare today, we want to pre-decide that I will seek first the one who matters most. I am devoted to Jesus. That's the truth that I want you to get in your heart today. I want you to make this decision. I will seek first that which matters most. I am devoted to Jesus. And so... Um, how did the early church do it? Here's how they did in the early church, Acts uh, 2.42. All the believers, they devoted themselves. That's where we get the devotions. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and prayer and sharing in meals. And so, they, so they're, they're having fellowship. They're together. What you're doing right now is that because you're fellowshipping with other Christians. Um, they devoted themselves to, the, the, uh, to teaching. That's what, hopefully what's happening right now. I'm, I'm trying to teach you some things. And they, and they ate together and they prayed together together. So what happened? What was the result of them giving their heart, mind, and attention to God? We find it in the next verse. A deep sense of awe came over them. And the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. I don't know where that sand came from. And all the believers met together in one place, and they shared everything they had. They in were me. devoted in me is how that it is, where it is devoted. Now it, it's uh, it's ongoing, continual. They call that a, in uh, Greek language a perfect tense. In other words, that that means it's, it keeps on happening. It goes in in, in uh, on and on and on. And so they were devoted constantly, consistently. They were perfectly, consistently focused on on Jesus. Uh, now next week we're gonna get to see some more Lord of the Rings. I apologize, I took a week off from that. Um, but could we, could we say that about ourselves? Uh, we're actually more interested in um, kind of a, a life of ease. It, uh, the, um, the MCV version would read, uh, they devoted themselves to themselves. They continually and passionately pursued a self-centered life of comfort and ease. That, that's how most of us Christians do it. Um, now, I, I, I hope that's not me. I hope that's not you today. Um, you know, uh, but, but, but look at this little, this little illustration. You have 168 hours in every week. Now, this is, they've stu they did some study to figure this out. Uh, 56 hours sleeping, so that many working, that many doing other stuff. Uh, 30 hours a week that you just kind of fill with stuff. And now some people say, oh, I'm so busy, which I, and I think so we need to quit complaining about how busy we are. You are as busy as you want to be. Uh, as you are as busy as you, you have exactly the same number of hours that every other person is. But it's possible that you feel really busy because of what I answer, uh, talked about earlier, and that is you're letting your days tell you what to do. You're not telling your days what to do. You're reacting to your life rather than taking control and owning your own life. There's a phrase that, that uh, I find myself saying sometimes, that person refuses to show up to their own life. It's like they're just floating around, and, and they're, they're, they're not doing anything to better themselves or have anything. They're, they're not showing up to their, to their own life. I want to encourage, God is better for you. Show up to your own life, and as you, so when you say uh, all this, think about the, the time that you, that you spend things on. That was terrible. Let me read it. Think of the things that you spend time on. If you were to look through your week. Now, it may, I've done this, and it is painful, okay? It's, it's really painful. Uh, and maybe if you, if you think you're, you, you have don't, no time for the important things, you need to do this exercise, 
Keep track for a week of everything you spend time on. Everything. Take, keep track of the time that you spend in the bathroom. Keep track, of, uh, keep track of the time that you spend eating. Keep track of the time at your job where you're doing different tasks. When you get home from work, how long does it take you before you do this and do that? And, and keep track and be ruthless. Be ruthless of keeping track of every little thing if you're feeling overwhelmed. And I can guarantee you, well, I, I, I can't imagine that not being true for everybody. I know it's true for me. It is shocking to see how I spent my week. Uh, it, is, it can be shocking to see uh, how much time you spend uh, on looking at your phone. And there's apps that will help you do that. They'll tell you, what you how long you spent on certain apps and that kind of thing. Uh, ironic, an app to help you stay off of apps. But, um, you know, because we, we lose ourselves so often. I, I am capable, and I don't do this a whole lot, but I am capable of watching astronomical amounts of TV. I can sit down and I can veg and I, I binge really good. I, I'm good at, at that. It's a skill. Um, you know, it, it, so when I look at my time and I say, okay, I'm feeling rushed. What am I spending my time on? Uh, well, I learned two things. One is, is I spend my time on stupid things. The other thing I learn is, is that uh, I've learned that I really don't need to manage my time as much as I need to manage my energy. Because I get to the end of my energy way before I get to the end of my time. And so, and so then for me, the self-control comes in. Uh, I need to rest in good ways so that I have the energy to do things I do. Because popping down in front of the TV for four hours is terrible rest. You know what I mean? It, it, it leaves you. It, it's, not, it's not good. And so, so you've devoted all that time to all these things. You've devoted the time. You devote the time, the most time, to the things that you are most devoted to. Two. So if you devote yourself to one hour a week of exercise, you don't expect to have uh, a really great health. If you uh, devote one hour a week to the relationship with your, your spouse or your kid or whatever, one hour a week, don't expect to have an intimate relationship uh, with, with that husband or wife. If you spend one hour a week, uh, you might squeak through uh, high school, uh, but you're not going to become a doctor. At least I want my doctor uh, studying more than, than, than one hour a week. And so we got all of these things that we, we can't expect results by only doing it a little bit. It's, it's kind of a consistency thing, again, that we were talking about last week. And so if we give one hour a week, which all of you are doing right now, thank you for that. Not that it doesn't mean good, but if, thank you. I got your one hour a week. If you give one hour, no wonder if this is the entirety of the time that you're spending with God every week, uh, your life feels like it has no purpose. You feel distant from Him, and it's so easy to slip back into sin. So today, I want you to join me in predeciding three things. We are going to predecide a time, predecide a place, and predecide a plan. This is how you tell your day what to do instead of letting your day just blow you around. Okay? You're going to pick a time, you're going to pick a place, you're going to pick a plan. And you have the time. I'm telling you that you have the time. You just need to step back from your day and put the big stuff in first, the important stuff in first. And I hope that you're, and I'm going to try to convince you today that your time with the Lord is the biggest rock you have. Because we got this incredible Bible verse that says, if I seek the, the kingdom of God above all else, he'll give me everything I need. We have that incredible verse. And so this is a promise. God says, if you focus on me, if you devote yourselves to me, if you, if you do that, I'll take care of everything else. And I'm going to show you what that looks like here a little later in the service. So you have the time. You just got to put the big rocks in first. If I had a big jar here and I wanted to fill that jar up, um, if I filled it up full of sand, I couldn't get the big rocks in. But if I put the big rocks in first, all of the stuff that happens uh, that blows me around during the day, I want that to be sand. I want the important things in my life to be the big rocks, to be the things that this is the priority. Um, so number one, um, now, or now we're walking with God. Uh, not just an hour, but it's going to impact our whole life. You'll never regret the time that you spend pursuing God. And isn't that interesting? How did I manage that? I did this on an airplane yesterday and did that. But anyway, that, that's okay because I've only got 15 minutes left and I got plenty to say to you. And so it might be a little light on notes. Um, 
but we're going to get this right slide up anyway. I don't even have the right slide. Hold on. Um, we're going to predecide a, a place, a time, and a plan. Actually, let me get that slide up there, and we'll just hang out there for a minute because that's a really good. So there we go. Let's let the camp right there. We're going to predecide a time, a place, a plan. If you don't have a time, it's not going to get done consistently. Okay. If you don't have a place, it's not going to get done consistently. Consistently, and if you don't have a plan, it, it, it's not going to be. Uh, uh, it's not going to be done consistently. And, and I, I told you a few weeks ago, so I'm not going to repeat all of that now. Um, about um, how my devotional time, I think I shared that last week about what, what my devotional life has looked at it, like in my life. It went from being just rock solid, consistent as a young person to when I got involved in the ministry, ironically. <laughs> I was working so many hours a week and, and, and it wasn't real healthy. And, and then my devotional life fell apart, ironically. And, and I would try to get back to it year, over the years and, and things. And... and um, and, and then God got a hold of my life. And so now I get to enjoy uh, a really uh, consistent devotional life. And, and just, you know, and I'm not somebody who does consistently consistency well. I told you last week, never in my life have I finished a one-year Bible. I've read the Bible lots of times, I'm sure. But as far as, hey, I'm going to systematically read it, I, I've never finished one. I've never once, I, I have read uh, My Utmost for His Highest and Living Dead and some of these incredible devotionals. I have never in my life finished a daily devotional because I just, it, it just doesn't work for me. Um, I'm, I'm all over the place. Um, but what I can do is I, I have a time, I have a place, and a plan. And my time, place, and plan uh, is going to look different than yours, uh, probably, because uh, I've been doing this a while. I, I, and uh, my thing is, I have my, I, I told you this last week, my first alarm goes off at 345. I usually wake up before my alarm. Um, and he said, oh, Scott, how can you get up that early? Well, nobody bugs me at that time of day. You know, none of you are awake yet, so you're not calling me. You know, and, and uh, the it, it's nobody's doing anything. And do you know what I give up to get up get up that early in the morning? About two hours of TV. I get tired. Uh, I get tired by eight thirty. I tend to be in bed by nine o'clock, and I wake up before my alarm before four. Uh, it's like I have I, I tracked it on an app. You know, I'm right at about seven hours, uh, seven and a half hours a night is kind of my happy place to be. Uh, as far as how much sleep I need. I think it used to be more, but I'm getting to be an old man, and I think I need less sleep. Um, and, I, and, and I get to have that, that time with the Lord. And then I also have a plan. Uh, I, I, when, I, I, when I get to, I have a, a, a systematic plan that I, that I do do, that, but it could be uh, the time is my biggest plan. Sometimes I'll pray a long time, I'll worship a long time. Right now I'm, I'm studying the Bible deep, and that's the thing that, I, that me and him have, have been enjoying and doing things. And so uh, now you, you'll you probably look very different. I can make a pretty good case for the morning. Um, we know in, in the book of Psalms, it says, uh, David says, morning by morning you hear my voice. Mor uh, each morning I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. Uh, lots of people do their devotions in the morning for the reason that I said, it puts the big rock in first and then you can't forget. You know, you, you get out there and you say, well, how do you, how do, you do that? I, lots of tricks I've done over the years to get myself out of bed. Uh, it's gotten easier as I've gotten older. Um, but when I, when I first started, when I was uh, 15 years old, I told you this last week, I'll, I'll say it again, is I'd make coffee the night before, so it was at the fast drink stage the next morning, you know, all these little tactics. Actually, I didn't tell you this last, week, last time. One time, and I was, again, I, was at, I remember what school I was at. I think I was in the eighth grade. And I had gotten up at five in the morning, and I had done my coffee thing. And I came into class, and I was, and I was, dun, 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 and my, and my, and my uh, teacher, my advisor teacher, pulled me to the side, and she said, "Scott, I got to talk to you. Um, what did you take this morning?" <laughs> <laughs> well, what it was, I, I had spent a, a devotional time with God. I was also completely wired out of my mind at uh, 14 years old on caffeine. Um, and so I actually have a few stories like that. I uh, had one teacher one time. Um, I was, again, a wired as reading class. And, um, and then I came in and said, Scott, why are you happy all the time? And, and I said, well, I didn't miss a beat because Jesus rose from the dead and I get to spend eternity with him. And it's like, yeah. There's that. I also tended to sleep through fourth period. That was science class. That was less good. I did. I was also good at sleeping in class. But the um, uh, it was uh, it. So I was 
there's different tactics you can do, different things you can do to have a place, have a time. That's why we do the soap. I didn't talk about the soap today. We have a daily Bible study that comes out on, uh, on Facebook. But here's what I want from you today. Uh, I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, uh, um, this last week, I told you that we were in New York this last week. And New York is an incredible place. Uh, you've got the, the, the towers, and it's the, it's the central uh, location for the world's finances, really. The richest people in the world. You know, you look up across the sky, and there's helicopters just flying around. And that's the billionaires going from, from building to building, you know. And, and, and you've got people, you know, you look at some people, yeah, that's a trust fund kid right there, you know. And they've got these incredibly expensive clothes, and they're done up. And then right there is, is someone who's homeless. And, and boy, the smells that are in New York City. Holy cow. Um, there was a, he knocked you over, man. The pee smell in the subway. That was awesome. Not everywhere, but there was a couple times. Uh, yeah, it was one guy. Nah, I won't tell you that story. I don't have time. But the, um, we had lots of smells. And, and, but you, so you see this contrast of, of just insane American commercialism, materialism, like, like, the, like the extreme, extreme capitalism. And, and I'm for capitalism, by the way, because, uh, you know, it, it, it speaks to the greed of mankind <laughs> to produce. And that's, that's a system that works because we're all pretty greedy. Um, and so, so you've got that. And, and then and it was probably Wednesday or whatever. You know, one of the things that happens when you go on vacation and, and you do a vacation like that, especially we're in this tiny hotel room. Um, we didn't have to pay for it. Like I said before, we had lots of points, but it's so small. And so there was no devotions happening. It was like, my, I, I kind of did. I could get out my computer and, and things, but I don't want to wake everybody up. And it's just kind of a lousy time for spending time with the Lord and things. And so it got to be Wednesday, and, and I don't remember exactly what day it was. But uh, you start looking at these, and before I went to bed that one night, I, I said, do you ever daydream about being rich? I don't know. I, I just, I, you probably never do that. I'm that shallow, you know. That it, I, this is this is how I would budget it, you know. This is how I would give it away. This is how I would make sure I didn't lose it, you know. And um, and so I'm so I, that before bed, I, I'm as I'm falling asleep, one of these stupid daydreams are going happening. It probably doesn't happen to you, but it was in my head. And um, and then that next, and then I don't I don't remember the dream, but I woke up from a nightmare early in the morning, and I don't and I still woke up at four. It just laid there in the room. The hotel didn't even have any place you could like go to and have coffee. It was so anyway. Um, the so so I wake up and, and, and from a nightmare, and I don't remember the nightmare, but I was uh, consumed with insecurity. You know, just uh, you know the all, all the the things I, I I didn't have and didn't do and and you know and then of course the insecurities from whatever place and I and and I was just like. Uh, just, just felt it on me, and I'm being very transparent with you, um, and, and um, you know, and 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 hope you think, don't think too little of me, but but it was it, it it was it was heavy, and I think it was the seeing all the success, and and we looked at what the prices of the the houses were around there and things, and and even looking at the talent, um, you know, we went to the the Phantom of the Opera, we got cheap tickets on the street, you know, and we got and the, the you know. Uh, the best of the best in the world, and, and to be looking at the richest in the world, and the musically best in the world, and the, and, and the people that, you know, um, and then the next morning, I just woke up fantastically insecure, and I'm laying in bed, and it's actually one of the first things I do every morning in one form or the other, and I said, Lord, what I want, all I want is to know you and love you forever. And, and that is a four-line meditative prayer that is part of my regular devotional life. I pray that all the time because my life is completely different when I keep my heart and mind focused on eternity and not this, you know. Uh, you can be mean to me, but when I, get time with, when I get with Jesus, I know he loves me, and now what you think about me doesn't matter so much anymore. You hear me? You know, so, and so I, I, I pray that prayer that was a well-worn path. A well-worn path in that prayer, because I've said it thousands of times. I'll usually say those four lines for, for 10 or 20 minutes or something like that. A well, a well-paved path. I'm in bed in my own head. Lord, what I want, all I want is to know you and love you forever. And that insecurity came immediately off of me. Immediately off of me. It was just gone. 
and my and I was and I was refocused, and and, and it was and it was gone. I told you last week, as far as my devotions are concerned, um, in the last couple of years there have been some hard days. There have been uh, days where we wondered if church would survive. There have been days when we wondered, uh, you know, big. There have been some tough days. People, uh, yeah, tough, tough days. And and I've had some really hard days. I uh, just be honest with you. It hasn't not been not hasn't happened yet today. No, it hasn't happened lately. But uh, it, statistically, like I think eighty some percent of pastors have you know wanted to leave the ministry in the over the course of COVID. And I can tell you, I, I've never been. I, I mean, I, I I've never uh, been close to doing it. Um, but boy, sometimes you talk about daydreams. You daydream about driving Uber instead or something, you know, and just do, do the math to see if you could work and make that happen or make that work or whatever. There's been some tough days, but there have been no tough weeks. And I can tell you that truthfully because my insecurities and my weakness and my um, defeat, whatever it might be, that only lasts until my next moment with Jesus. And, and, and as I think, because it's really hard, next time you're feeling all crappy, the next time that you're feeling insecure and you're feeling small or you're feeling angry with God because so, you prayed for something and it didn't go how you thought it should go, and, and we've all been there, I encourage you to maybe take a minute and, and just get you and God. Maybe you do it on a piece of paper. If you're, if you're in a room, sometimes writing it out can be good. And, and just say, God, I'm only going to thank you for things for the next 30 minutes. And then just begin to write out the things that God has done for you. Get back to your testimony and how you met him and write that out. And then you check in, check in again with your heart in 30 minutes and see if that is indifferent. Now, I told you that uh, the magic trick is I had a little phrase when I was feeling small, broken, insecure, having woken up from a, a nightmare that I don't remember the nightmare, but it was one of those jump ups. And, and, and in that state, and Lord... What I want, all I want is to know you and love you forever. And boom, it was gone. It's because it's a well-worn path. It's a because I don't have to hype myself up. I have a friend, and, uh, and maybe he'll even watch this uh, someday. Uh, maybe I should tell him I talked about it. And then he'll definitely. But this, he's one of my best friends in the world. His name is Ron. And I've known Ron for years and years and years. And it's one of those relationships and one of those friendships that when we get together, um, it's, it's like we never left. I mean, he just thinks the world of me. I think the world of him. I feel good after I've spent time with Ron. He lives in South Dakota. Um, and so we, you know, we've gone a couple of years here and there without even talking. And a couple of years ago, we started, hey, let, you know, we just really enjoy each other. Let's start meeting in Sisseton. He's in, in Aberdeen. And so Sisseton is kind of in the middle. Let's meet in Sisseton. And, uh, and so we did that, and, and we should do this more often. And so then we did it once a month for a while and stuff, and then we'd have a couple starts again. I was doing the math. You know, it's been a year since I've met my friend Ron in, in Sisseton um, to have lunch. And, and, uh, and now I'm thinking, oh, I really want to do that. You know, it's so important in my life, and I like him, and that's, a, you know. But you know what I am? I'm kind of shy to call him. Because I feel like a bit of a jerk that we haven't connected for a while. I, I have to reach out, and, and he'll be fine, you know. Oh, Scott, I could have called you too, whatever, you know, and let's do it next week, you know. I mean, I know that's how the conversation is going to go. But I realized the, yesterday or one of these, you know, recently that I need to do that. And then I felt this pressure of insecurity that I'm kind of a jerk for not reaching out. Because I think I'm the one who canceled our last one and then didn't rebook it. You know, that kind of thing. And, um, and so, and then, I, I think it was yesterday, I was thinking, you know what? That's exactly how I feel about the Lord when I don't get with him for a while, when I don't do devotions. It, it's, like, it, it's like, I know he's going to love me, you know? I know he has grace, but it, it's, it's a little awkward starting a conversation when you've been ignoring somebody for a long time. And I want to implore you today, part of the, the pathway um, to being a mature Christian is, is painful because it requires humility and repentance to get to the grace. 
And, 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 it's, and so you, if, if it has been a while since you have spent time with God, with really, there really is no accurate way to measure your relationship with God. It, it, you know, I mean, you, you, can, you can say all these flowery things, but you know what you can't run away from? You can't run away from time. Time is quantifiable. It is an exact unit. Um, don't tell me that God is your most important relationship when you have given um, everything else so much of your time and, and, and nothing to him. Because you're lying to yourself, and, uh, and, and that's not fair to you. You know, um, it's measure, if you measure by time, uh, decide a time. I, I, I love the morning. No one bugs me in the morning. Some people can't do the morning. My wife is not a morning person. And, um, and, but, and then decide a place. Say, so, okay, at this time, this is what I'm going to do. If you leave anything to chance, you'll get tripped up. I'm going to get up, uh, and you know what trips me up? I like to make my coffee before the, the night before. I still like to do that. Because uh, I have to, to kind of look forward to. Uh, and Because I've, if I have to take the three minutes it takes for me to make my cup of coffee, it's some, it tends to be 15 minutes before I'm sitting in my chair uh, spending time with the Lord. Because you just get not moving as fast or whatever. And um, so pick a time, pick a place, and have a plan. Now maybe your plan is, God, I am going to open the soap every day and I'm going to read those 10 Bible verses. Um, I would encourage you, I, that's a good place to start, and I would rather have you doing that consistently than try, doing one hour once a week, because it's a lot like working out. And the goal is, is that you begin to build that relationship with the Lord, and seek the kingdom of God above all else, and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. One of the reasons why he will give you everything you need is because you're so available to him, it is so effortless for him to move you. It is so effortless for him to love you because you're with him. When you're not with him, he can't work on you. And then you, and then you complain to him about what's happening in your life. Well, if you had been spending the time with him that he wanted, it would have worked. I don't want you to feel guilty. What I want you to feel is hungry. What I want you to feel is like I am missing out because I have not been giving my Jesus that quality time. You should feel a hunger and an angst and a loss because I promise you, when you come to him and you know this, he's not mad at you. He's not going to make you feel bad. His grace is just going to wrap you up. It's just going to wrap you up. He has only missed you. I'm going to pray. And as I do, I just want to encourage you to, oops, that's not what I, encourage you to pray with me. And, and I'm going to pray that God would help us. And give us consistent um, devotional lives. I do a tune-up once a year. I do a, a long fast uh, once a year. And, and it's just a way to look at things. Because we got even if you've been doing it a while, sometimes you don't notice the paint is peeling unless you go out of your way to look at it. You know? And so, um, so maybe you're here today and your devotional life is awesome, but maybe you've gotten a little rough around the edges. But if you're here today and you're like almost all Christians, okay? And you haven't spent any time with God in the last week other than this or maybe you can count it in minutes on a hand or two for the entire week he's not mad at you but this Christian life is so much better than that and his desire to love and bless you is so much better than that and it comes through relationship Lord I we come to you today and we come broken. We sang that one song and it, it, it hit me so hard that, that, that you fixed the broken. I was broken and you had amazing grace on me. And so God, I pray that we walk in your grace today and we know that we'll never be all that we wish we were. But God, we want to know you. And I know that that is a, a cry. So God, I pray for all of us that we would take a step back from our life and say, what's the most important thing? And we would say, God. But our time and attention hasn't shown that. So God, we don't want to beat ourselves up, but we don't want that to be. We don't want to lie to ourselves anymore. I pray, God, that you would be the most important part of our, of our lives in every way. That we would have a bedrock, that we would have a foundation of personal devotions. Times when it's just you and me, and we're interacting. 
And God, from there, from there, I know that there's going to be other things of you that's going to grow out of that because now I'm going to be so much more sensitive to you when I'm, when I'm helping a friend. I'm going to be so much better at the job that you gave me. God, you're going to be able to bless everything just with that time. So God, I pray for rich and meaningful times with you. Thank you, God. Lord, I pray that there would be no legalism in this. It doesn't matter how many chapters we read. It doesn't matter uh, how many uh, names we, we check off, uh, the checklist that we check off on a prayer list. What matters is time and attention. We want to take a specific amount of time and give you all of our attention. And that's why the place and the time and the plan is so important, God. So, Lord, we commit I'm going to give you a moment. We're going to wrap up here. But if you would, maybe write it down on on the card. But but it's mostly for you. So I don't know if there's... uh, Write down or think through one way or the other. What is your time? What is your place? And what is your plan? Maybe just fix it in your head right now. What's going to be your time? What time are you going to spend with the king of the universe every day? What time? And once you got the time, where are you going to do that? It's a place where you are, are, are able to focus, a place that isn't going to have a lot of distractions, a place that is consistently available. When are you going to do it and where are you going to do it? And then when you come to that place and you're sitting in that chair or you're standing or, you're, or whatever you're doing, what are you going to do? I could take an hour to share with you all the different ways to interact with God in that time. It is rich and vibrant because it's relationship. Lord, in your grace and in your mercy, would you give us you? God, I used to pray, Lord, give me the morning. If you gave me that, oh God, that's what I would want more than anything else. And no no self-discipline whatsoever. But then you literally gave me the morning. I don't even know how it happened. It just happened. I started getting tired at night and getting up in the morning. Lord, I, I, and I just get is, I am so grateful, God, that I get to know you like that. So, Lord, I just pray for all of us that we could all know you like that through our failings, through all of it. In Jesus' name, we love you, God. Amen. Jesus was a rock star.